following um, those soul stirring silent ozus, I felt I needed to follow up that with some glorious trash and lo and behold there was some glorious trash waiting for me um this is a movie that i had been wanting to see um for about four years when i saw old acquaintance the original film with betty davis and marion hopkins and i was googling and i found out that not only was it remade with a movie starring jacqueline Bissett and candace bergen it was directed by george kukur and at one point there's a scene where they call each other cunts and i was like sign me up i need this movie and um, here it showed up on Filmstruck when Jacqueline Bissett was uh, Star of the Week. And I was like, yeah, I can finally watch it. So I watched it tonight and it held up to all of my expectations, which were high in that I wanted it to be terrible, but like good terrible. And it was definitely good terrible. So um, I don't I, I don't know, like it's so good, it's, so, it's bad kind of stuff. I, I don't know that I buy into that. Um, I don't mean terrible as in not well made. I mean terrible as in it's just, it's it's trash. Like the novels, Candace Bergen's character writes in the movie. They're good in that people enjoy them. They're trash in that they're trash, if that makes any sense. So the story, if you've um, not seen Old Acquaintance, is about two college friends who meet as freshmen in Smith. They are from different backgrounds obviously Jacqueline Bissett, and then Candace Bergen's character is playing um, as if she's from Atlanta. Her accent varies a little bit. Um, the It takes place over 22 years in three different um, time periods, The first or four different time periods. The first in 1959 where they've met, and Bergen's character falls in love and with their mutual friend and elopes, and they move off to California. Cut to 10 years later, and... Uh, Bissette's character is now a literary rising star. She's just written this great novel, and she's in California, and she's visiting her old friend, who now has a house in Malibu and a husband who's got a great job and a daughter. However, she's also written a book of her own, and it is a salacious um, Romana Clef about the uh, love lives and scandal around rich people in Malibu. It becomes a huge success. This causes a rift in their friendship. And then the next two segments are when, in 1975, when um, Bergen's character is now much more famous than Bissette's character. And then in 1981, when they're both relatively well off and all of the all of the drama that has happened in the previous segments has come to a head. And now there's like major, major drama. And it's like, will their friendship last? The only way to save a friendship is to call each other a cunt to your face and to your friend's face and you both agree. Honestly, just just clear that air and then you'll be good. That's what this movie has taught me. Um, some criticisms. Uh, I read Pauline Kael's review and she specifically said in some of the earlier uh, trysts of Bissette's character that they felt more like a gay man's fantasy than an actual heterosexual woman's attempts at scintillating love life. Scintillating, scintillating, titillating. Um, I kind of think I agree. There's some moments where I was like, yeah, this would make sense if both the both the characters were men, but it didn't quite work um, as a woman. And there's also some moments where it gets kind of anti-feminist at bits, unnecessarily so. Um, at the beginning where she basically is like, I'm not a feminist, I just care about work, which though aligns with a lot of mid-century female writers, so it's on, it's on par there. And then at the end where, um, spoilers slightly, she's talking about how she'd always written these novels, these high art novels, hoping that men would find poetry in her work and now they can, she's going to go off to Greece and they can find poetry in her body. And it's like, no, the lesson you should learn is that you should be writing novels to fulfill yourself. And maybe give something to other women. However, this screenplay was not written by a man. So, or was, was written by a man. Um, and the book, or the play that both films are based on, is also by a man. And I think perhaps a story that's due for a fem an actual, truly feminist um, reworking 
could be good because a lot of a lot of women, even when they find strength in each other, still have a little bit of competitiveness. It's a different, I think, kind of competitiveness now, thankfully, than it used to be, where it was like only one woman can succeed. Well, it's it's just that natural competitiveness that everybody tends to have with everybody else because we're always trained to just feel like we're in a racetrack, which we shouldn't be. But um, I feel like there's a this could make for a really fun updated. Uh, film and this last version was 1981 so we're almost 40 years out we can it's due for a new version um as a female writer and female director the actresses I loved they chewed a lot of scenery but I was into it um all of the actors like get out of the way you just are window dressing um the score is by George De La Rue it's one of his last scores I believe and it was so gorgeous um and then it had super young Meg Ryan in her um debut I believe and a whole bunch of people playing themselves so at one point Marsha Hunt shows up Christopher Isherwood shows up Roger Vadim shows up Paul Morrissey shows up Ray Badbury shows up Nina Fox shows up Dick Cavett shows up what Dick Cavett's playing himself the rest of the well they're all playing themselves Dick Cavett is playing himself interviewing one of them um the other ones are just like in a party scene and it's glorious um so I recommend it if you love just wonderful trashy trash um if you're a kukur completist it's great to see his last film if you love any of the actors involved in this um it's just it's delightful i loved it i enjoyed it it, li it lived up to my expectations um this is 1981's rich and famous and i think you should watch it and enjoy the heck out of it and maybe do it as a double feature with um the 1943 film Old Acquaintance and like do a compare and contrast that's always fun uh so anyways Rich and Famous it's on Filmstruck check it out George Kukur it's fantastic